Everybody, welcome to the Tewksbury School Committee meeting on Wednesday, May 15th. It is now 7 p.m. The May 15th, 2019 School Committee meeting will be televised and recorded. Under the open meeting law, the public is permitted to make an audio or video recording of an open session at a public meeting. At this time, I would ask if anyone is recording tonight's meeting to please identify themselves. Okay, seeing none, I'll ask our, our guests here in the audience to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, and Mr. Malone, we have some recognitions tonight. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, very happy to have a few recognitions here this evening. And our first recognition has to do with our Wynn Middle School and our National Geographic B. And I'd like Mr. Ware to please come up front. And he's going to be joined by Daria Mirabani. If she's here, she come on up. And. Uh, Mr. Ware, we do do this every year, but this is a, uh, a very rich contest for the uh, Wynn Middle School. And maybe if you can tell us a little bit uh, overall about the uh, program and a little bit about our winner. I would have to go. With, I would have to go with Norway. Very close. Very close. The answer was Sweden. <laughs> I'm showing my. That's why she won. Do any comments from anybody on the committee? Amazing job. Just a great job. Uh, again, uh, every year. This year I didn't get the question right. I usually do, but this year I didn't get it right. I, I'm showing my method education. Um, but uh, just a great job, and, and I know it's great. And it's good to see sometimes geography is one of the, the lost child. And, and it's great to see, and a great job. Uh, and good luck, to, good luck to everybody who participated in it. Thank you. Mr. Long? Thank you, Monsieur. Um, our next recognition is the Tewksbury Memorial High School Decker Club. If I could have Mr. Sullivan please come up. And um, 
as always, uh, DECA is a great organization at Tuxman Roll High School, and it's one we're very proud of and is represented very well statewide. Thanks a lot to Mr. Sullivan. And Mr. Sullivan's gonna talk a little bit about the International Career Development Conference and some of our students who did an outstanding job. Mr. Sullivan. Thank you very much, Mr. Malone. Uh, I'm honored to be here, even more honored with Mrs. Pasteri here, who is the Queen Bee of Tuscarora High School DECA. Uh, without Mrs. Pasteri, we wouldn't even have this program. I was fortunate enough to take over for her when she moved on to bigger and better things with the administration, so first let me thank her. Um, she was a great mentor to me and, and really started our program and got us to where we were, so. Uh, and I thank you for your kind words. As I said to our students, we met the other day and had a, a year wrap-up meeting to kick off for next year. This is Nick one. I'm just the advisor of it. Um, they're all the ones that do work. I do some prep work, I kind of put them in the right direction, I help them out, but all the credit goes to them. They, they do all the work, they do the prep work, they, they make it happen and get it done. So the students we have with us today attended the international conference, which this year had over 21,000 attendees which was held in Orlando, Florida. Um, each, the two teams we had competed amongst 125 other teams worldwide. It's the international conference, it's no longer the nationals, it was just in the United States. There is uh, China, there is a significant group uh, in Canada. So it is worldwide, you guys did a fantastic job, um, both at the district conference where they competed amongst 850 other members, then at the state conference with 2,400 other members, and then again, as you said, at the international conference with 21,000 total members. So uh, that was a great experience for all of our students, whether they go into business or not. So at this time, I'd like to call out all our students. Uh, first, Colby Burke, Colby Brown, Rebecca D. Francesco, and Tori Schilling, who competed in the innovation marketing plan. Uh, they created a, what I refer to as a juice truck, but they created a business that um, bought what they referred to as ugly fruit that couldn't be used in other um, resources in other ways, and they created a juice truck that repurposed that fruit and made fruit drinks and did fruit juices and was going to travel across the country. It was really a fantastic project. Um, those of you that are familiar with soccer understand when the World Cup comes around, they talk about like a bracket of death. These guys are in the bracket of depth at the International Conference where they can put the flights of like 18 teams in their category. The two teams that came out of that group, which only two come out, one of them ended up, they both were finalists and then two of them ended up in the top 10 in the entire world. So they're, they kind of got a top right there, but um, they finished first place both at the district conference and at the state conference. So these guys were state champs, and as I said to Tori, she might be the only kid in the state of Massachusetts that is a state champion as an athlete on the on the hockey arena, the hockey ice, and in academics at, uh, at DECA, so uh, they did a great job. And then our other team is um, Ryan Bennett and Matt Frondudo, who competed in a new category this year that was the Integrated Marketing Campaign Series that had to do with uh, services, and they created a 45-day marketing plan for ESPN's fantasy football. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan, if I could ask all of your students, if you could move down and sort of go uh, turn yourselves a little sideways so that the camera is capturing the front of you and not the back of you, that would be awesome. <laughs> 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 one of these meetings or something. And then um, our other member that's here with us here is Mahir Babool, who competed in business financial services. Um, Mahir is just a sophomore with us here at the high school. Uh, has been really involved in DECA. He finished in first place at the district conference and finished at seventh, in seventh place at the state conference and attended the leadership uh, conference with us at the international conference. Under, unfortunately, Marissa Ladbush was unable to make it tonight. Um, she was a co-director of this year's Mega McCarthy Research Fund Fashion Show that we raised over $10,000 for that fund and made that donation to them. Uh, she also attended the International Conference and participated in the Leadership Conference. So, these guys were tremendous. We also had uh, Jack Statman was great for us at our district conference and qualified as a state member as well. And I want to thank um, your, one of your newest members, John, and my brother Keith, who actually came and judged at our district conference at UMass Lowell this past year. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Memorial High School Deca Club attended the 60th Mass Deca State 
Career Development Conference, and whereas Colby Brown, Rebecca DiFrancisco, and Victoria Shelley placed first in the Massachusetts State Conference Competition and the Entrepreneurship Innovation Plan event being anticipated at the International Career Development Conference in April 2019 in Atlanta, Florida, and whereas Ryan Bennett and Matthew Carnudo placed fifth in the Massachusetts State Conference Competition and the Integrated Marketing Campaign Service event and participated at the International Career Development Conference also in April 2019 in Atlanta, Florida, and whereas Mahir Fogal placed seventh in the Mass State Conference Competition in the Business Financial Services he attended the Thrive Leadership Academy at the International Career Development Conference in April, also in Orlando, Florida, and whereas Marissa Ladbush attended the DECA Leadership Academy, participating in the Community Service Project event. She was a coordinator of the Megan McCarthy DECA Fashion Show and participated at the International Career Development Conference in April, also in Orlando, Florida, and whereas Colby Brown, Rebecca E. Francisco, Victoria Shelley, Brian Bell, Bennett, Matthew Trenudo, Medea Bagul, and Marissa Latimer exemplify the qualities inherent of exceptional students and members of the DECA Club. And whereas Colby, Rebecca, Victoria, Brian, Matt, Medea, and Marissa have brought great pride, recognition, and honor to themselves, to their parents and families, to the Tuxbury Memorial High School, and to the town of Tuxbury, now therefore be it resolved the Tuxbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the many efforts and accomplishments of Colby, Rebecca, Victoria, Ryan, Matthew, Mejia, and Marissa. Congratulations. Energy savings. Any any comments from any of the committee members? All right. Obviously, great job, guys. Hopefully, uh, we were able to take in some of those sites where you guys were uh, down in Florida. <laughs> um, and I like to say too is, is one of the highlights of all the school committee meetings that we have is when we bring students and our athletes here to be on it. And academics to see people come for academics is amazing in itself. And uh, I think the job you kids did with DECA was just outstanding. And hats go out to everybody who helped out with it. Once again, congratulations. You should all be very proud of yourselves. You're showing that the town of Tewksbury has some very well-rounded students out there. Academically, socially, you'll be leaders and good role models to your peers. You should be proud. Thank you. Moving along to the student representative report. Grace. Thank you. So first we have SAD Club. They are sending their mass media campaign to print and they are finishing up all their activities for the year. Best Buddies is getting ready for the Tom Brady Football Classic event at Harvard on May 31st. They will also be having their annual fundraiser at Wamaset Lanes on June 25th. International Club had 20 students helping out on Earth Day and they were, they were working at Melvin Rogers Park which is an underused hiking trail, and so they cleaned up the trail from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. to promote the use of the trail for the community. And they will also be having a car wash at MVP on June 8th. JCL is working on an art project about the Greek muses. Student Council is preparing for Step Up Day, and they're talking about ideas for next year. For math team, the Armel competition is coming up at Penn State with Kunal Paul <coughs> at the end of the month to compete as an Eastern Maths mathlete. NHS, the, um, the new council is taking over and getting geared up with potential volunteer opportunities for new members. They successfully helped out at the Flower Power Project on May 4th, and the junior members are in the process of ordering NHS t-shirts, and they will also be, they also do successfully donated goods to the Lowell Wish Project to support low-income moms during the Mother's Day weekend. She's the First Club is pleased to announce that on May 11th, they held a bake sale at the art show on Saturday from 10 to 2. Because of their efforts, that day, they exceeded their goal of raising $1,000 to go towards the She's the First Scholarship Fund, 
and this fund is used to support women that are the first in their families to graduate high school in underdeveloped countries. And lastly, DECA had their meeting for returning members, and they're excited for next year. Thank you, Grace. Now, uh, Grace, I'd like you to come up here, please, and stand over <laughs> here, please. <laughs> Get right over there. Face the camera. Right over there and face the camera. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Over her four years, Grace Morris has, has been involved in all aspects of student life at Tewksbury Memorial High School. She's the co-president of the National Honor Society, four-year member of the Student Council, three-year member of the School Council, secretary of the class of 2019, executive board member of the Mass Association of Student Councils, captain of the Science Bowl team, member of ECHO and DECA clubs, interview committee for the assistant principal, school committee rep for the past two years, top 5% of her class for 2019. And with all that, she is a manager at Meadowlands Ice Cream, where she always gets my ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> she is there to help with any new student tours for teachers, candidates, and students shadowing. Grace always is smiling and positive each and every day. Grace applied to 16 schools and got accepted to every one of them. Grace will be attending the California Poly Polytechnical State University of St. Louis Obispo in California. She plans to study environmental sci sciences. Best of luck to you, and a special thanks for all you have accomplished in your time at Tewksbury Memorial High School. Thank Members, that's okay. Quick to say anything? 16. No, I know Jack will have a <laughs> big shoes to fill with with Grace's departure. So, best of luck with with you, Grace, and Thank you. Uh, good luck with your with your studies. Thank you. Grace, good luck. Never forget where you come from. <laughs> best of luck to you again, Grace, and welcome we'll aboard, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. We'll Grace. miss you, honey. I just want to say you've graced us, really, with your smile and your positivity, and I fully suspect you're going to go out and save the world for us, and we look forward to hearing um, about your future Thank successes. You. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks again. Thank you. Hey, good luck, Jack. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mall? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next, we have some presentations, and our first presentation I am a little nervous about. Um, I had the same feeling when I went to see Blue Man Group for the first time. So, but with that, our robotics team is here and uh, it's advisor, Mr. Scott Morrison. Mr. Morrison, if you can come on up and tell us a little bit about your presentation and, and your team and who's with you and prepare us. So thank you for having us. Um, yeah. Team is going to give you an update on where we've been, what we've done, and where we're going. So we have Chris, Ariane, Alex, Jake. We have Zach, who's going to run robots in the back. We have Josh, who's a mentor with me. Our team only works by the support of the community. And having mentors who are experts in the field come in and teach the kids things that they can learn in school, because you can only learn them from outside. So. We're going to start off with a little robot demonstration. You want to help get him set up over there? And we will demonstrate how this year's robot works. So, yeah, basically, we have we a robot to basically a challenge. And each year, the challenge changes. So we basically have six weeks to build this robot, like actually design it, build the robot from scratch. And every, the first Saturday in January, we're getting up. So we actually put up a summary of what the game manual was on the back of the sheet here. And with the game manual, we also have the common care parts, which also includes the drive through and also some basic electronics that the robot needs to work through. And from there, we can modify some of the parts, like we have some new pieces in the car here, and also cut up some pieces and pipes. So, 
there, so we designed a ramp that can put it. Josh, we can't we can't get to it because of the bumpers. There you go. <laughs>
back into the team, which not many teams are able to do just by the sole fact that they don't have enough funds and extra in order to reinvest that. So, and as, in addition to that, we've also had um, machine donations as well through Flashforge, which Josh is part of, and uh, Ranger, which has donated um, milling machine. So that's the one of the aspects. Is there uh, any questions at all? Any questions from the committee? John? Uh, I got a few actually. My, my, um, I actually did, um, <coughs> my minor was actually in robotics, so this is kind of like really cool stuff. Um, so your, your two mentors, um, what is your, your companies you guys work for? How much time do you guys, you guys spend, or yourself spend, with Tuxbury? I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, now, are you guys reusing this same robot? Uh, I'm assuming you're repurposing the robot. Um, typically, we keep them assembled just for the sake of showing them off for demonstrations to further educate the community and kind of grow the uh, program. But uh, there are some years that we would disassemble the robot, the scrap parts. Typically, that doesn't happen for a good four or five years. Yep. So they t this will definitely be together for a, while, a long time, but we don't reuse this for the next season. We start again start from scratch. Wow. Now, how many are in your, your total clubs? Just the six or five of you guys? Uh, there's about uh, 15 students. Oh, okay. Well, we're getting them all here with spring sports happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Well, thank you for, for bringing this in. I mean, obviously, I've got a ton more questions. I don't want to derail the entire school committee. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's amazing technology. <clears throat> a great presentation, fantastic robot. What is the power source for that? Um, it is actually a 12 volt battery. It's just uh, basically your car battery cut in half, is the way I like to think about it. And how, what do you get for a runtime on that? Um, if, you, if we run, so our matches run about 2 minutes and 30 seconds, the battery is pretty much drained by the end of that. To the point where we can't use it again for another match, we'd have to recharge it. Great. Fantastic, great work, thank you. Yeah, I just think it's a great program and a great effort that you guys made, and you really accomplished a lot, according to this, so keep it up. Yeah, this is just, it's amazing to me. Do your peers in school ever get to see all your fine effort in products? Do um, they, like, well, for the one chance we did have, usually do have, is the step-up day, where the eighth graders come by. So we usually let all uh, let the school know, and then we yeah. usually get a big crowd. The students walking by, and sometimes yeah. come by and ask questions. But that's really it. So we're looking, obviously, to grow that beyond just the step-up day. This club's doing amazing things, so. Be, you know. uh, thank you. I think it's uh, I think it's just an amazing club. I, I know when we talk about uh, STEM, I know if uh, a former member was here, Ms. Bennett, she would be in her glory right now. Um, but I think it's just a great job and a great point. Great work in terms of, you know, we almost got to the internationals and everything, and um, hands off to everybody who helps out with that. And it's a great partnership with some of the businesses uh, in our community. It shows you what you could do when you work together. Thank you, great job by everybody. Thank you very much. Are these 3D printed? Thank you. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Great job. Ooh, love it. <coughs> well, uh, Mr. Chairman, our next presentation is our partners from Alpha Best Education. We have Dr. Basteri joining us, who is our interim community services director. And we have Jenny Mutter from Alphabest and Gina Mistrata from Alphabest. And um, 
As you recall from the committee over the past year and a half, we've taken a long look at some of our community services programming. Uh, we solicited surveys from parents. We looked at surrounding districts. Uh, we began to navigate the complicated relationship between community services, the town, and the school district in an effort to try to streamline some of that. And through the partnership of our town manager, uh, we actually put out a request for proposals to do both our summer programming and our before and after school extended day programming during the school year. And we were delighted that Alphabest uh, not only applied, but certainly uh, was chosen in that bid process, uh, certainly led by our town manager. And we're looking forward to great things. And I think uh, Dr. Basteri and Ms. Marta can talk a little bit about some of the transitions we're looking at to happen uh, this summer in changes in programming and to be prepared for heading into the fall for extended day programming. So with that, I'll hand it off to Dr. Bastieri. Good evening, and thank you so very much for allowing us the opportunity to come and talk a little bit about the upcoming wonderful changes that are coming to our school district. Extended Day has been around in Tewksbury for uh, a long time, since 1996, and we have a wonderful, kind family staff that has worked in the program but now we have this wonderful opportunity for Alphabest to come in and um, reinvigorate uh, and, and do some wonderful upgrades and changes to the curriculum that we offer. It's very exciting uh, to have them come on board. So I'd like to have Jenny talk a little bit more about um, the program and what they have to offer. <coughs> First, I'd like to thank you for the invite tonight to this. Um, just pulling onto your campus this evening, I was like, I could see the spirit coming out of the cars and on the football field and walking through and seeing the students dancing and taking pictures. And you can see the life of Tewksbury here in this building this evening and with those who came before, before me tonight. Um, I don't have any lights or shiny flashy faces, <laughs> but I'm so inspired to sitting here. I'm like, I want to see more. And you get me now uh, before you. But, um, Gina Mistretta, and Gina is going to be the area manager for Tewksbury, so she'll be in charge of all of the day-to-day -day activities um, that happen in the district. She came on with Alphabet just a, almost a month ago now, um, but she has experience in the field uh, in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire doing um, before and after school programming and summer camp. I'm Jenny Mutter. And I've been with Alphabet for about six years now. Uh, I started off as an area manager in Cumberland, Rhode Island, where we started. And now I get the, the luxury of leading this team in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. So I oversee those, uh, those groups there. We have about six programs that are before and after school. And we have uh, some enrichment um, programs that we do in Reading and Situate. And we have a, a, just a straight up summer camp program we do in Melrose. Uh, now I wish I had a better presentation for you tonight. <laughs> um, I, I handed out some, or I provided you some folders. And inside of those folders, all that really is there is just to, to arm you with some information about the program this year. Um, we started the process back in February when we received the contract notification. The first things that we worked on were registration. When you start, uh, you all did a bid very early on for the RFP process, which was wonderful um, and it provided us to get going quickly on our registration and providing the opportunity for families. Uh, by February, a lot of families have already registered for summer camp, so the urgency was there to make sure our systems were, were ready to go and, and families could get online and register for our programs. I think I must speak to at least 20 families sometimes a day, sometimes in the same person that calls, um, but it's been wonderful to speak to all of the members of this community who are involved in our programs. Um, at this point, we have about 183 families registered for our programs, um, which is tremendous. I know for summer camp, I ordered 233 shirts already. So we have about that many who are um, attending summer camp. And that was a couple days ago. We certainly had more in the last couple of days. Our registration opened March 19th. 
And for summer, we're going to be closing that out in a couple weeks just to make sure we can ensure proper staffing for the community. And the notice went out to uh, all of the families to let them know just you have a couple more weeks. And then as weeks are open for families, we'll open it back up so that if there's spaces in the weeks, we can be starting to um, open up those spaces for all the families. Um, our ratio for summer is one to 10 for summer camp. We are gonna be licensed by the Department of Health. That's something a little different um, than in previous years for our summer camp. So we have some regulations that'll be different and some requirements of our staff and our students. Uh, we are going to be at three locations this summer and all of our summer programming we try to mimic what had been done in the past. So while we're bringing in new programming, we try to keep the infrastructure in place that would allow families an easier transition. And so we will be located at the rec center for the first two weeks and the last two weeks of the program. And that will be beginning on Wednesday, the 19th of June. The reason I asked for a couple days after school ends, I know it's always challenging for families to find care, but it's just to orient our staff and to have meetings with our staff and prepare for our students. <coughs> and then they will go into three locations, the Wing, the North Street, and the um, rec center for the middle weeks of summer camp. And you can see on the flyers that you have there, um, the different opportunities uh, for the different age groupings. This was also the same as in previous years. So there's nothing that has changed there aside from the elementary school location. And that's something that the district uh, notified us of that uh, elementary school location. Inside your packets, you also have our pricing. That pricing is um, the exact same pricing as previous years. We matched it. And the offerings are the same as well with regards to schedule. So families have an opportunity to pick AM care, half day AM, half day PM. We mimicked this from the previous um, years. Mm -hmm. And then um, full day care with offerings of one to five days. So parents, I think there were 273 variations for our systems in offerings for parents that we entered in. So they could do one day a week for a full day, they could do half a day, they can mix it however they, they choose. Um, so there's flexibility for family schedules and they can pick whatever weeks they want to for care. Um, the only thing that would be different is there is a cost savings because we don't charge for field trips. And last year there was an additional expense for field trips and we don't charge anything more than you see as the price for the week. So that is a significant, I believe, significant um, savings for families each week. Um, that's part of the program. There are no additional fees. Uh, right down to we have a parent portal where parents register online and they can sign up for auto pay with their checking or credit cards or they can go in and pay <coughs> or, uh, they can bring money orders to the site there's no charges no additional charges for using your credit card or your debit card which i think there might have been previously too so that's a really good savings um trying to think i can't remember i didn't even remember all that yeah. <laughs> now i have to find notes. i don't know i have to find where we are um so our summer camp um, is divided, as you can see, into three locations. And our going places camp is for primarily up through the elementary school level. So up through that uh, entering the sixth grade group. Um, and we do have some more, uh, some curriculum more geared toward our pre-K students as well. But that going places will be for that group. There's a middle school flyer in there. And um, all of this information that you have in front of you with the exception of the slideshow that we previously prevent, uh, presented to the uh, search team for the RFP um, is on our website. So all families, if they go to alphabets.org backslash Tewksbury MA, they can all access that information. And, and, um, there's a family handbook there. There's our contact information up there. Um, and it's where they register for our programs. Um, there's also frequently asked questions for what our going places summer camp is about, and that's a book um, based on a book written by uh, Peter and Paul Reynolds. I have a whole, I don't know if you want to ask questions later. All of our, we do a lot of um, investment in technology. That was epic um, with the robots and stuff like that. We do tons of, I could have bought some, you know, Ozobox or some uh, Lego stuff to show you. We do fabulous things with technology in our programs as well as the arts. Um, but all of our staff have iPads, and on the iPad, um, 
it's all of the lessons that they'll do. And I think it's important that when they, they take the time to, to do these lessons, what are our activities for our students? So they're not sitting there with a the book and doing studying or that. They really try to find the best way to make it engaging. <clears throat> and I think that's how they can make it accessible to so many children, because they can customize it to, to the children in the program. Um, <clears throat> As I mentioned, oh, the, uh, we're licensed through the Department of Health for summer. The ratio is 1 to 10. For our students who are under the age of 7, it's actually 1 to 5. And so that's the ratio we will have for our students at uh, primarily the North Street School. Um, when we go on field trips, it's all hands on deck. So it wouldn't be necessarily that 1 to 10. It would be probably less than that. Um, in the school year, we're licensed by the Department of Early Education and Care. Um, so that will be new to the district as well and to our staff. We have welcomed all staff that worked for the previous program for community services. All are welcome to come work for us. If Dr. Bestieri says thumbs up, then we welcome them all. Gene has been interviewing them for the past couple of weeks. Um, we are requiring them to just, um, we have to follow some guidelines for licensing, so to do additional background checks, references, resumes, all the things that are required. Um, but she's had a wonderful time uh, speaking with all the folks who previously worked for the program. So we hope to populate our sites and our team with people who work for community services. Um, in addition, and if we need extra staff, we certainly have a, uh, a pool of those folks as well. Um, uh, I met with, um, I met with those teachers who worked in the previous program at the Wayne Middle School a couple months ago. A month or two, I think it was a couple months ago. We're going to have a parent open house night. And what we do on that night is kind of we'll show them a little bit about what we do in summer, and then we'll show them some of what we do uh, during the school year, too. So they'll come in. We typically, when we do these events, we have a space where they can come up and talk about registration, or if they have specific questions, I'll be there to answer them. We'll have a team that can show them some of the activities we typically do in our programs. Uh, and we're hoping to have that the first week of June, although I know it's a very busy time of year, um, but prior to the start of school. I mean, sorry, sorry, summer camp. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. We're work so we're working through licensing, our open house. We will have orientation for our staff prior to camp. And I also wanted to speak to some typical questions I have from folks. I received one yesterday morning, early yesterday morning, from a uh, person who was part of the uh, Tewksbury um, Special Ed Committee, or she's a parent on the committee, and she wanted to know about um, how students who might have special needs would participate in our program. And um, I, I told her I would address that this evening if she could make it, um, as well as offer it to go to the, the Special Ed Committee to talk to them. Uh, we are working with Ms. Noyes um, <coughs> over at Student Services, first of all, to uh, work with the bridge program and so that they could participate in our summer camp this summer. I think we have about 15 students who will be participating. Um, and then what we do is we have a process where when folks will register, so say your student might have a special need, when you register for Alphabet, you're going to get a welcome survey. And we invite parents who might have special needs to fill out that welcome survey. And what that does is precipitates a process where we start reaching out to them. We talk to um, educators, <coughs> parents, personnel who might work with that student. If it's during the school year, we invite parents to come into our program to see how their student might succeed. Um, we make modifications to um, activities. So I know I could think of a student who um, has uh, fine motor skills as one of their accommodations. They, they struggle with fine motor skills. There's more to that, but to keep it free. Um, and they are doing cartooning because they're working with uh, one of the group leaders or one of the teachers sits beside, beside them and they modify <coughs> the zone so that the student could actually trace out the cartoon and they modified it for that student. But these, when, when folks are doing this welcome survey, it allows us to individualize it. So when I'm asked the question, how are you going to accommodate a group of students, I don't think any of them uh, would be accommodated as a group, but as individuals. 
And that's what we do with our process. So they'll go through it. We have a team of folks. It's not Jenny who makes this plan for our student. It's, it's a whole team of people who work with our, um, with our site, and then we work with our site directors to train them in how to work with our students of varying um, special needs. Um, so I want to make sure I address that. Um, so if you have any questions, I have a ton more I could tell you about, but I was told to keep it very brief. And so um, I'm happy to take any questions. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'll start down this end, Chair. Um, <coughs> you, you mentioned the field trips being included in the, the camp for the right. kiddos. Um, are you planning to have a number of staff still at the North Street or the you know, home location and additional staff that's leaving to go on the field trip so, so that the students don't not, have to? This, we do not normally keep staff back. It's either they would come on a field trip or they wouldn't. I think, if, however, that with some of the field trips, and we would let parents know if one of those field trips would mean that. So say the whole staff was going to the zoo. Uh, I think we would have to look to see if parents indicated that they don't want their student. And when I've been talking to them, what I've told them is we typically don't need staff back. We have regulations in order to have any <coughs> staff with the student on the field trip. With that being said, there are a couple of like one hour field trips or um, there's some in-house field trips. Okay. There's some that we could co possibly work around so we can do that for families. I got an email today from a person who was inquiring about the summer school program mm -hmm. and how we would accommodate that. Um, so that's not um, something I've looked, I've done before, So, but I'm happy to look into it for them and see how we can accommodate that family as far as coming into the program if we're on a field trip. And will um, the field trips be one time per week? Does it vary week to week? We typically How often? have field trips on Thursdays, but there's a couple weeks where I think we have a Wednesday and Thursday field trip. But typically they're once a week. So the parents will be told ahead of time so they can plan they accordingly. They have a list now of the field trips. They all have a list now. Yep. And if there's any changes, we even tell them what time we're leaving, what time we expect to be back, will they eat lunch, will they, we're actually required to list all those things for them. Excellent. That's all I have. So Mr. Collins? Yeah, I, I like the price. I think the price is a very good deal <laughs> yeah. it's in the district. So, uh, but I had a question about the sample curriculum. Sorry. Is that the after school, uh, during the school year? When that you... is, yeah, in the, um, let me just look at that here. That is a sample curriculum. Again, this is not necessarily what would happen here. And so you're looking at, uh, where it says sample curriculum 18 and 19? Correct, right, yeah. Correct. Um, so every year we switch it up, and so you're always going to have the five areas, the fitness, technology, drama, arts, language, and culture, and we're doing major, we do major this year, um, and every day. You're still going to have your time outdoors and that sort of stuff. Fitness is more of an organized activity. Yeah. Um, this year, um, these are some of the things they're doing this year, but next year will be different. Some of it will remain the same. Um, Mandarin might see the same, or Spanish, or the culture, but the activities will be different from year to year. So if your students already done Spanish, we, we transition to maybe a different Spanish curriculum and a different uh, partner for that. And, and you break it up into blocks, it looks like that? Like so how it works is every day, and we, if, if there's homework in the district or not homework in the district, depending on, or school, you know, schools, we have some without homework, some with homework. Students would come in, have their snack, do their homework, have some recess time, and we do an hour of the zone each day. If we had a group where you have 50 students or 60 students in one of the buildings, we would divide them up. Some of them might do drama, say we could divide them up by age. Say we would do day one drama, and then two, three would do, just as an example, two, three might be doing fitness that day. But families will also know what days those zones are on each week, and it'll be consistent each week. The activities will be different. And then after that, we do clubs, and um, those are driven by the students and by the teachers in the building. They, they figure out what clubs they want to do. It could be something from a recycle club all the way down to, uh, we had somebody actually do a golf club. And they were using plastic golf clubs, and it was student driven, and he wanted to teach his friends at the elementary level how to golf. A little bit dangerous, uh, but all ended well. Yeah. There was nobody hurt. It was good stuff. Sounds good. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Chairman.
Can I, I'd, I'd love to comment on the sample curriculum, and I, I was part of the interview team with Alphabest, and I can just remind the committee that Alphabest unanimously was our number one um, organization for our extended day and summer program, and this is truly why. When we looked at their sample curriculum and the types of um, zones that they were going to provide our students for after school. We really saw this as an enrichment and extension and really um, to help our students academically and socially succeed. It, it really impressed us the way that they provide this structure, but also the flexibility to work with a district. If we decided a certain grade level or school, we really want more, and let's just say it's robotics or STEM or some other way to really beef up our students' understanding of and you can fill in that blank. So we were very impressed with this approach through Alphabest, and it really, I think, tipped the scales in their favor. Coming in here and seeing your students, it thrills me because this is exactly the type of place where Alphabest is just will thrive. Because just looking at your students, just looking at this community, and looking at what you're looking for, I can see it in the children that are here tonight, the young adults. Uh, our zooms are, are pretty fabulous, and you're always moving. I give an example. All of it is on here, and I know we don't have a lot of time. I'm always happy to come by and see people and show them the curriculum that's on here. But they could be doing Spanish while they are running across the gymnasium floor. They could be um, we could be outdoors doing an activity that has to do with drama. So everything we try to engage all their senses in everything we do. And we also partner with the district if you have. So we do positive behavior supports. And so if you are a part of positive behavior supports district and everybody's got different ways they do it, we could use the terminology you use in your district. We could follow through with what you're saying to your students in the school day to have that real partnership with, um, with the district. And we, we have our own system, but we have used others that are in um, school districts. What does it look like to be an alphabet? How are you responsible in alphabet? Um, how are you respectful to, your, to folks in alphabet? Um, we can do that too. Yeah, thank you. Very good. Great. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Certainly seems like it's going to be a great program. I'm very glad to hear that um, you're going to have some individualized plan for those students that require additional services and support. That's obviously a concern of ours. You know, all means all here for us in Tewksbury. Um, that being said, if you do want to present, I know the CPAC is having their meeting here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock if you would like to uh, attend and maybe. Uh, Pass some of this wonderful information along to those parents and as well. Somebody had emailed me from last night. I cannot make it tomorrow. Okay. But I wonder if what I was going to ask you if there's another forum, whether it's a library community center or it doesn't have to be just members of that. I'm happy to talk. Sure. To you. But I would say for those, I'm happy to present to them. I, I love to come and talk to them. Mm -hmm. I want families to feel welcome and ease their minds with their questions. However, I think if they have direct questions about their students, mm -hmm. I wouldn't certainly do it in this forum Correct. or in even that group forum. Sure. But I would recommend that we set up a time to talk. I could even do a group call with them okay. um, to identify those needs because if their questions are specific to their students' abilities, uh, then we would want to deal directly them. with yeah. them. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm happy to. I can't do tomorrow, but I'm very happy to do it with them. Sure. And no I, problem. I actually, I actually have a son who has autism. So I certainly can relate to those concerns and questions sure. and um, sympathize and, and want to find ways to help them, um, like mine. Right. right now, so. Good to hear. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you. Just that? Yeah, just a quick, just a quick question. How have we been as a community as far as the, the enrollment numbers? Um, Comparatively speaking? As far as the first rollout. Um, I know you were saying 183 and that looking at tremendous amount for a new okay. for for us to come into a district and have that immediately. Okay. No, it's um, good to hear. I mean that's yeah, it's no. And I I really I have been um, maybe not physically here in Tewksbury, but I feel like I've been living in Tewksbury for a couple <laughs> months now. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure. Everybody's so kind and welcoming. I mean, I can't say enough about Dr. Vestari and her team. Um, they just it just it's been it's just been wonderful, um, but that's tremendous. Um, and I've done my best to communicate with everyone who's called. Mm -hmm. um, I figure the more I can talk to families, the more they'll talk to each other. I'm aware of social media, though I don't look. Um, and they, they communicate that way as well. So I've really made a strong effort to try to speak to everybody. So I think that might be a part of how we, um, we have that higher enrollment this early with our first time here. Well, that's good. Hopefully you can get the yeah. numbers up and keep growing from yeah. that. 
It's when we came into Cumberland, I didn't, after the first year, I didn't even advertise. Yeah. We, uh, we were just word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And I think if your program grows with word of mouth, that's the greatest mm -hmm. sign of how, how well your program is. Oh, it's so good to hear. Thank you. And you should definitely come by and see some of our technology. No, like I said, this this stuff is. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a geek, so that's yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So. Um, thank you for the yeah. great presentation. The one thing that I'm most impressed with is your enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. To see somebody up there that isn't from Tewksbury to be enthusiastic there, I think it's great. <laughs> uh, one of the questions I know you talked about, you're going to have um, some community meetings. Yeah. As we approach the fall, would that be the same setup we have going into the before school and after school for? The fall as yeah, well. we can do another open house for families at that point. Um, I think that it's a, it's a very easy transition for um, families to register for the fall and some have already. Um, I don't have a, I actually have a counting paper somewhere for you if you wanted them, but um, all they, once they're in this parent portal, they can, they can get information. All they have to do is register for the fall. We actually don't even charge a registration fee for anything but once. So we charge um, $50 for registration for a full year for a family, which is also really affordable, regardless of how many children they have. Um, but yes, and I'm happy to come back and speak again about our school year programs. Summer kind of gives you an eye into what we do in the school year, mm -hmm. because they put it into blocks that have, um, while it's the Going Places curriculum or the Growing Places program for the summer, they, they do the drama and they do the technology in those blocks throughout the themes for each of the weeks for summer. Thank you. And again, uh, like I said, your enthusiasm is tremendous, and, and I agree with what Mrs. Regan said in terms of the different zones. I think is is definitely the right the right approach. And as Mr. Cutler said, the pricing is is, is right there. Once again, thank you, and uh, welcome to welcome to Tuxbury. Welcome to the whole team at Tuxbury. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, our. Uh, Final presentation is um, in regards to the 2019-2020 elementary student handbook. We have Principal Garrish and Principal Whetstone here to talk Mr. a little bit about Mr. Harding is disposed <laughs> along Ms. Cronin, but I'm sure our other two principals will do very well. So with that, I'll hand it off to you, Ms. Whetstone. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Thank you so much for giving us some time tonight. Um, Mr. Malone is right, we happily represent um, the K-4 principals that we work with. Um, tonight we're going to be sharing just some brief updates on our handbook. There aren't too many tonight, um, some technical and logistic updates, and then we have some, um, there's a few wording changes as well. Um, so I'll go over the changes, and then we'll show you some samples of how the handbook looks a little bit different. Um, so one of the things you're going to notice is the formatting change. Um, the table of, con of contents is automatically updated when changes are made to any section where the position on the page is impacted. So this is great. So some families have a, a paper copy of the handbook, but we also have this digital version now that's updated automatically. And we'll show you how we have links as well in, in the table of contents. Um, there are some updates. We have some new school times. Um, and we updated the names of current administrators, which, you know, that's an easy change. Um, on page 20, we're going to talk a little bit about valuables. The language is consistent with the Tuxbury Memorial High School wording. And then on page 29 is the signature page, and we're going to talk about the availability to families, whether it be online or a paper copy. So on page 20, you'll see the, the former language is crossed out, and I'll read to you um, the new wording for valuables that aligns with Tuxbury Memorial High School. Students should not bring large amounts of money or expensive items to school. Items may temporarily be stored in the main office. The school is not responsible for the loss or theft of students' property. And students should not bring valuable items to school. Such items and their loss cause disruptions in the learning process. In addition, students must never leave their property unattended. And Terry is going to talk a little bit about where that change came from. We, it, it actually happened after Christmas. We had um, children got uh, some. One, there, there, is, there are new swanky watches that have cameras in them and all kinds of things that children can wear to school. But when they're in kindergarten, first and second grade, or even third or fourth grade, uh, kids don't know that 
a $100, $200, $300 dollar item is really not an appropriate thing to be bringing to school. And so they bring it to school and they put it in their, lock, their, their lunchbox or they put it in their backpack or they leave it on the floor or they trade it back and forth and then, then, then there gets to be a problem because somebody, is, it either gets broken or somebody gets hurt with it, or, or, or it goes missing and so it, it's just easier to keep the expensive stuff in. And so that's, we just wanted to be a little clearer um, about it, and then we just made the, we're a little bit redundant, saying please don't bring large amounts of money or expensive things to school, and please don't bring your valuables to school, but we figured if we said it two different ways, maybe we'd get the point across. <laughs> sure. Okay, so we have the signature page. Um, and again, I won't read this for you, but the point is that there's paper copies always available at each school office. Um, and we'll also show you the, the two different ways that families can access the signature page. So, if we, if we go to the, the current handbook, I've just popped this up, this happens to be the Doing Elementary School uh, website, but which we've updated. The current handbook, once we will take the word draft off of it, as soon as you, uh, we've completed everything that we need for approval, the copy, the paper copy that you received had um, had a paper had page numbers on it. That was our big that was our big learn this year was learning how to actually use a little bit more of Google Docs and some of our own technology <laughs> to format something so that it was easier not only for us to present but for families to read. And when we go on to the website, we now have everything hyperlinked. So if we want to talk about academic record information. We go right, and it will take a family directly to the section. If we go back to the top, and we want to talk about the just a couple of tweaks on the signature page, the last page of the handbook is the signature page to be returned to school. Parents have the option of printing this out and bringing, having it come with their child to their teacher or there is a link that's also on the website that will take you directly to a Google form where students, where parents can then, we, uh, we started this a little bit last year and we just fine tuned it a little bit so that the, um, any child, regardless of the four schools, you can enter up to four children on the same form so that you would highlight there it is. So you would, there's a drop down, you would highlight what school, you put the child's name and grade, then we can, you can put up to four children, and then here we have digitally, I've received, renewed, and understand both the handbook, the acceptable use policy, and here are our permissions for photographs and videos. I have to tell you, we still have some conversation that we want to have over the next year about whether or not parents have to give us explicit permission to publish their children's picture or whether or not we automatically assume that we have permission unless they opt out. Um, it's one of those conversations that are ongoing when we're talking about um, trying to broadcast and put publicity about some of the wonderful things that we do on our Facebook pages, on our web pages. We have a list, every school has a list of the children whose families, for whatever reason, would like their, fam their child not to be out in the public, but we're trying to find the best way to communicate with families on an ongoing basis. And the great thing about this Google form is that the administrators of each school can sort, so we can all have access to it and just sort by school and get the information that we need. Yeah, we talk about, this is Stephanie, you talk about being uh, a robotic geek and everything. I'm kind of a numbers geek and a, and a matrix and spreadsheets. And so we can do spreadsheets and sort and put, you know, and put macros on there and so we can sort that information any way, any way we want. Um, so there really aren't, we have, we have spent a number of years as the, um, folks who've been on the committee for a little while know, we've spent a long time looking at the, um, what we expect of our children and the information we want to provide to our parents, asking for feedback so that the four schools work together so that we provide a preschool through grade four comprehensive, consistent expectation of 
what what our, our what we do in school and what parents can expect from us. We spend a lot of time. We meet monthly to make sure that what we're, we're responding to parents equally, we and, and consistently. And so this is just the next year. We don't have lots of substantive changes at this point, but we, we made it. We just made it. Oh, we have to show the last page yet because we found all that. No. Oh, we found a swanky clip on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have to end with something cute. Come on. We're, we're, out of That's right. Right. we're early childhood school. That's right. Any uh, questions? We have yeah. to answer anything that you have to put. Yes. Um, well, thank you very much for the presentation, for coming tonight, and for being patient through all the time you needed to wait. Um, I did have a couple of questions on the handbook. Um, I noticed it under the homework section, um, we weren't specific as far as minutes per grade. Um, has that been a conversation amongst the, the principals? And um, could you just give me some information as far as, you know, is it 10 minutes starting in first grade and you add 10 minutes as you go to second grade? So, um, I, if you could just clarify that. I'd absolutely. We actually spent a lot of time um, sharing this with the committee last year okay. because it was an issue that had come up um, because there were concerns about families. Um, we, we very specifically didn't put a certain number of minutes <coughs> per, because the, it's a variety. We didn't want to put 10 minutes for this grade and 15 minutes for this grade. One of the things that we did address with the homework policy is that we wanted to make sure that we, we recognized in the handbook that parents are, and families are busy on the weekend. And so the idea of having expectations for multi-night homework assignments and assignments over weekends or vacations might be, we want to be able to take the needs of the family into account and that we really didn't want, didn't really want to push that that much. Right. As long as we want meaningful and not just meeting the minutes. Is. So I just, I wasn't privy to the conversations in the past, so I apologize if you're repeating yourself. Not at all. Um, but um, another question that came to my mind when Alpha Best was just here presenting was that she had mentioned the PBIS system, you know, and having consistent language before school, after school in the summer. Um, while I know that the social emotional is embedded into our curriculum and we have all of the support services with the school psychologist and, um, in things in our district that will uh, um, uh, approach that social emotional needs of the students. Do you have a consistent responsive classroom or, you know, is it, are you looking at the castle? Like, is there something consistent about amongst the four buildings with like PBS language that might be helpful to Alphabest when they are coming in with our kiddos before school, after school? So our expectations are the same? Um. In the past, the elementary schools have looked at an open circle for a social skills curriculum. And that was done for a number of years in some of the schools. We do not have, the, we use the consistent language of the social emotional learning standards that are put out by DESI. Right. And we try to, we embed those within our, um, within our regular teaching and learning. Uh, a number of us are using our counselors and our psychologists and our time to talk about zones of regulation. And a lot of that seems to be the, um, the area where we're going next that creates that common vocabulary that are able to. But right now, I have to tell you, Mrs. Demos, it's mostly a school by school, and it's not that consistent. The expectations are similar, but the vocabulary is not. And I, and I do think we've uh, certainly piloted many elements. One of the things, once we look into PBIS and all our elements, they have separate data keeping systems. They have separate set of interventions that sometimes can counter academic interventions. There was just a report in the Marshall Memo today in regards to full implementation of social emotional programming actually decreasing academic achievement. So one of those pieces is we've tried to take in the best of every practice we can find and there's still more out there to look at while at the same time focusing on the programming, the assets available, what are the specific needs of the student, and trying to make sure that every element of that curriculum and instruction has that overarching social emotional element that's built into it. Um, and I think that's a piece, unfortunately, that's just a piece 
that has to be looked at very closely every year because different pieces come in, success is had with certain elements, sometimes <coughs> lack of success causes you to move in a different direction. Mm -hmm. But to keep it joined in with the curriculum instruction, we think believe, we believe that it actually brings more fidelity to the social emotional learning for the student. Agreed. So I want to thank you again for all the time and effort put into this. It's much appreciated. Thank you very much. I just want to thank you both. I think that was good. I skimmed it over. It looks pretty good to me. That always can be. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. I'm just glad we finally got one consolidated handbook for a couple of years now. It, it seemed to be uh, something that was long overdue. It seems like we have a lot less questions from parents. So um, thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Devin. Yeah, I, to, to Keith's point, Mr. Solomon's point, I, I like the consolidation and I like the any use of, you know, a Google Doc and not having to, you know, not, not to put my second son, he's constantly losing things and, oh, look, this is at the bottom of, the bottom of, and the complete bottom of your, your, you know, this, that, and the next thing. And I having, can't imagine why it's not a priority to, to, to bring paperwork back and forth. <laughs> yes, so having the Google Doc and signing off this, that, and the next thing and, you know, click, 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 and you're all good to go. So I appreciate that being a, a, another parent, so. One of the things that we had heard from the previous committees was that we want, um, the previous committees had asked us to make things more family friendly and easier for parents. And so we've been trying to do that again. We're getting a little bit smarter each year. Yeah. But now we know the next piece that we want to go on some consistency for some other things. Yeah. So that's helpful. Thank you. All set? Mr. Yes. Chairman. Can I uh, ask the committee to indulge uh, taking out of order the approval of the K-4 elementary student handbooks from new business? I'd like, yes. like to make a motion to move out of order new business, the vote on the 2019-2020 K-4 through elementary school student handbook. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. I, just before the board, I'd just like to make one comment. Yes. Um, and I, I couldn't agree more with Mr. Sullivan in terms of the consolidation. I think that this is, I think for so many reasons, this is the way to go. It's much more consistent with, with all the schools being, being together. And just a, uh, uh, just a great job. And uh, that being said, do we have a motion? Make a motion to accept the 2019-2020 K through four elementary school student handbook. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, I have a motion on the floor and second to accept the 2019-2020 elementary school student handbook. I'll take this as a roll call vote. Mr. Stebbett? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Demos? Aye. Mr. Cutlass? Aye. Chair votes aye as well, unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Appreciate your help. Thank you. Okay, next up on the agenda is Citizens Forum. Is there anybody wishing to speak tonight? Seeing none, next we'll go over to our clerk for the approval of the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make a motion to move the minutes of April 10th, 2019. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion on the floor and a second to approve the minutes of April 10th, 2019. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The chair votes aye as well. Now the submission and payment of bills. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to approve um, the payroll ending April 18th, 2019 for the amount of $1,365,625.78. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion on the floor and second to approve the payroll ending April 18th, 2019 for the amount of $1,365,625.78. All, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. Unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd also like to make a motion to move the minute, um, to, sorry, to approve the payroll ending May 2nd, 2019 for the amount of $1,299,470.26. Second. I have a motion on the floor and seconded to approve the payroll ending on May 2nd, 2019 for the amount of $1,299,470.26. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. I'll turn it over to Mr. Malone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a couple quick items in the superintendent's report. Just a reminder that the annual spelling bee will be arriving here in June as well. Uh, on June 10th and 11th at Tuxedo Memorial High School, great event, brings a lot of students in, and it's a great competition. 
Uh, congratulations to all the students and parents who participated in the art show banding chorus performance uh, last week on May 10th and 11th. Just a tremendous display of outstanding artwork. Our art teachers did a great job assembling that. Obviously our students produced some great work. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to see the band and chorus performance, but uh, having seen them before, I know it was outstanding. But it's just one of our hallmark events here in the district, and, and just once again, a, a great job by everyone involved. Um, last week, uh, we had two students represent us in the Merrimack Valley Superintendents Association Academic Scholars Luncheon. Akili Aaron and Brooke DeSimone uh, joined myself uh, Ms. Regan and several members of the Tuxmoral High School staff and uh, they were recognized uh, throughout the Merrimack Valley with 24 other school districts for their outstanding academic achievement. Um, and just as a reminder, we are in the final stages of developing the Tuxbury app, mm -hmm. which will take our website and have it accessible to uh, parents and students on their phone which would give them uh, quick access to information such as the calendar, quick means by which to communicate through email, and quick one-touch call of attendance and contact the school. So we're in the final stages of that, and we're looking forward to it very much. Uh, also a reminder that we continue to move on looking at programming for next year. And a reminder that we will be having one uh, substantially separate classroom from the doing move to the Heathbrook next year as we continue to look at equity and distribution of programming uh, throughout the district. So we're pretty excited about that. It's going to give us some great opportunities for collaboration and working together. Uh, also at the doing elementary school, they will continue on with their 21st century learning grant, which has a summer component in it which will provide the same level of service, uh, even extended over a period of time, that those students involved in service by that grant during the school year will now receive during the summer. Uh, in addition to that, we're also encouraged to see that the Heathbrook Elementary School is beginning to look at opportunities that may result in them applying for that same grant as well. Great opportunities for our students. Um, and uh, finally, uh, Mr. Harding could not be here because he is directing Peter Pan right now. Uh, I had the opportunity to see the show uh, Monday night. It was on last night. I know members of the committee and the staff were there last night, and it is on tonight. It is the final performance tonight. But uh, what's striking about uh, this play at the Wynn School is that not so much the theatrical performance, which is outstanding. Mm -hmm. It's the total involvement of the Trahan community in this performance. Uh, literally every staff member is involved in this performance. Almost every single student is involved in this performance. And it just speaks to uh, the Trahan school spirit. Uh, it speaks to Mr. Harding's leadership. And it is something certainly that we're very proud of. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Regan. Thank you. Um, I would like to echo the Peter Pan play put on by the Trahan students, really. I, I joked a little today with Principal Harding and said they really deserve a Tony. And I think, too, if you were to see the set design and the <coughs> costume design, I know Mr. Francis was there last night, and you would agree, outstanding for this uh, elementary school to put off such a show with all of that um, sparkle. If I could also, I'm going to just add a little bit to the 35th Annual Tuxedo Public Schools District Art Show. I have the names here of our best of show winners, so I'd like to add to your update. Um, and I agree with Mr. Malone. The, it's, it's just really a jewel of the district every year, and, and it's looked forward um, to by everyone who attends. Our best of show from the high school is San San Nguyen, a senior. Best of show for from the win is Lindsay Frontaine in eighth grade. Best of show from the Ryan is Michael Crawley, sixth grade. Best of show at the Trahan, Celeste Webb in third grade. Best of show at the North Street, Elena Tarara, third grade. Best of show at the Heathbrook, Kylie McDonald in grade one. And best of show at the Doing, Max Rossio, second grade. Hundreds of other students won awards from first place ribbons to honorable mention. It was just amazing. I do want to thank 
our judges who volunteer their time. It takes hours to look through and view all that artwork. Our judges, uh, retired art teacher, Mr. Dan Rogaki um, from the high school, local community artists, Rita Samard and Jeanette Waugh, and Michael Simpson came out to judge our student work too. Again, we'd like to thank them for their volunteerism and the time they spend to um, inspire our budding artists. Next on my update is Tewksbury's annual bike rodeo and health fair. That's coming up in June, uh, June 9th to be exact, Sunday, June 9th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Students and families of all ages are welcome to bring their bike, wear their helmet of course, finish the safety course for a chance to win a new bicycle. There will be bike safety checks, DJ, music and dancing, helmet decorating, food and fun. Again, all ages are welcome that Sunday, June 9th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at the high school. And this annual event is co-sponsored by the Tewksbury Police Department and the Tewksbury Health Department. We, of course, appreciate all their efforts on behalf of keeping all of our kiddos safe. Um, MCAS update. You'll be pleased to hear that this week we're finishing up our elementary and middle school grades three through eight math MCAS. Next week, grades, uh, and this week, in fact, our grades five and eight, science, technology, and engineering MCAS are finishing up. Next week, grade 10 students will participate in the next generation math assessment. And then the week of June 4th will be our grade nine science assessment. So the next time we meet, We'll have hopefully completed all of our next generation MCAS tests. I will tell you that um, minimally, but some students, we're seeing maybe one-ish at each grade level are having a difficult time with the online <coughs> testing uh, system. Not through any fault of the Tewksbury Public Schools, our network or our uh, infrastructure. It's an issue that other districts are having too. It's a small issue, but it has affected, as I said, a handful of students. For example, a student will log in, begin the test, and get bumped out. We have to stop, restart, and go back. Um, there have been times when um, a very small handful of students have not been able to regain their online test. And they have been swiftly overnighted a paper-based test to take the next day. So um, the testing, MCAS testing center has pieced back all of these students with these technical issues. As I said, you know, we're seeing one at each grade level. So we're not quite sure this, this issue is being reported um, statewide. And as I said, we, we believe through their uh, um, technical advice, this is a testing system issue and not a district issue. As I said, it's happened in others. So we'll keep you updated. Um, can I just say the parents and students who have had these issues have just been phenomenal and very patient and don't seem to get as anxious about this as we are, so we thank them for that. Um, and then the last thing on my update is um, sad for us as a district, but happy for Ms. Jan LaRock, who as you may have seen in your consent agenda, has put in her letter to retire this year. Ms. Jan LaRock has worked, or Janice LaRock I should say, has worked for over 17 years now, has uh, survived her time with three superintendents and four assistant superintendents, Jan and Gail. The Jan and Gail team at the Tewksbury Public School Central Office are amazing. If you um, stopped and just took an assessment of all of the tasks they do to manage the many facets of our superintendent um, office, it it's amazing. I mean, Jan will be just such a loss to the district not, with her not being here. Just a brief list of some of the things that she organizes and manages for us and, and just alone this spins your head. When you think about all of the district professional development including course reimbursement, conferences, uh, the 504 processing management for the whole system, uh, quarries, fingerprinting, many and many, many more tasks uh, for the district. Again, we will miss Jan greatly. And I hope she's hearing us a little bit through the airways tonight because um, her shoes are going to be hard to fill. She's amazing. And um, again, I, we all wish her well and a happy retirement. That concludes my update. Thank you. Mr. Libby? Good evening. Um, I just want to update the committee on uh, some of our maintenance and tech projects we have coming up for the uh, end of the school year and into the summer. Um, as you can see from our presentations tonight, uh, our schools are 
not just 10 month facilities anymore. We have uh, places going pretty much 12 months a year now at most of our buildings uh, with programming. Um, so it's uh, difficult to squeeze in these projects, but we uh, know we do have to do the best we can to get uh, as many of these maintenance uh, initiatives taken care of um, during this time that we have while the students are in summer session. So um, with the status now known of our new school building, uh, you'll notice on our list here we've kind of taken the focus uh, for the doing in the Heathbrook schools into more of a long-term um, project mode at the doing in the Heathbrook. Um, but we still have to uh, make some investments at the Trahan and North Street, keep, make sure we keep those buildings comfortable, operable, and safe as educational spaces for the next few years while we're still um, occupying those buildings. Um, but here's the, some of these projects are tentative, some of them are definite goes um, that we're pretty much committed to for this summer. Uh, the doing school, uh, the electrical upgrade, that's, a, that's an ongoing project that's already started um, to add electrical service to that school. Uh, we've done landscape improvements, they're already started as well. There's some more that's gonna happen there in that area. Uh, we're looking into some uh, increasing some parking to help with some traffic flow at the front of that building at the, at the doing as well. Uh, the doing where we have a contract in place to replace all exterior doors in the building. That's, a, that's definitely going to happen this summer. Uh, we're looking into replacing the outside stair railings at the doing school. They're uh, rusted and in uh, kind of rough shape in most of the areas of the stairs and the out exterior of the building. We're looking into uh, uh, audio and video system upgrade in the cafeteria <coughs> at the doing school. Uh, security camera upgrade, we're looking into that as well at the doing school. Uh, we're looking into a new sign for the doing school and uh, the standalone water heater uh, will be uh, proceeded, we'll be proceeding on that project uh, with the help of a grant through the Green Committee. Uh, that will be happening over the summer at the Doing School this summer. Uh, Heathbrook School, we're looking into um, replacement of the cafeteria floor. Uh, we're doing a mic drop. We're doing a <laughs> we're doing a roof coating project that we started last year where we did one-third of a product uh, that we applied to the roof of the Heathbrook School last summer. Um, we're gonna uh, do the other, the rest of the roof, the other two-thirds um, this summer, hopefully. Um, that's uh, a 10-year warranty product that will guarantee us uh, no leaks in that roof and buy us another 10 years on that roof without a complete roof replacement. But it's a, a pretty solid product that uh, we like to, we're pretty happy with the results that we, that we found this year with the, the, the section that we did over last summer. So we're looking to move forward with the, the rest of the roof this summer. Uh, we're looking into painting hallways and some classrooms at the Heathbrook. Um, and we also are replacing all the exterior doors at the Heathbrook School this summer. We're also looking at the same thing, audio video upgrade in the cafeteria, uh, security cameras, sign, also all um, things we're exploring at the Heathbrook School. Uh, North Street School, uh, we're looking into some exterior paint uh, with the Alphabest program uh, that's gonna occupy most of that building. We're kind of limited as to what we can do inside the building, um, but it is in need of some exterior work. So uh, we're looking at doing, at doing some painting on the outside of that building. Um, the Ryan School, we're replacing our system clocks. Right now all of our clocks are a little out of sync. So we're looking into uh, getting them all on a system clock that works on our bell schedule. So all of our uh, teachers will be in sync with the, uh, with the bell schedule clock and uh, more uh, system-wide school clock system. 
Uh, and we're also looking at a security camera upgrade for the Ryan School as well. Um, the Trahan School, we're doing some boiler repairs that um, we, had, we found that uh, were necessary to get those boilers. We're, we operated last year with one boiler at the end of the season uh, to get them both operable. We're doing some boiler repairs over the summer and we're going to update the security, the uh, vestibule similar <coughs> to the North Street School. Um, so we have a, a more secure uh, building at the tray here. Uh, the wind school, we're doing some floor tile work and uh, upgraded security cameras there as well. Um, so as you can see, very busy summer planned um, and working around all the programs we have uh, is often a challenge. We have the 21st Century Grant Program. We have special ed <coughs> extended school year program and bridge program, the alphabet programs that are happening in our schools. So we have to coordinate around those programs and make sure um, everybody has the space they need. Um, but uh, we always seem to make it work and we'll get as much work done as we can so that we're in great shape when the kids come back to school full bore in uh, the fall. Mm. Yeah. That's where we're at. Thank you, Mr. Levy. Anybody in the committee? Okay. Uh, tonight's consent agenda. Is there anybody wanting to take anything off of tonight's consent agenda? Seeing none, do I have a motion to accept tonight's consent agenda? I can make that motion to accept tonight's consent agenda. Okay. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept tonight's consent agenda as presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. It's time for uh, committee reports, and later on in this, um, in the, <clears throat> under new business, we will be voting the new committee reports, but um, we, will, uh, we will discuss it as we go along. So the elementary school building committee, I'm gonna do that report first. I offer a brief update since the last presentation on April 10, 2019. The building committee continues to conduct project meetings and informa informational updates throughout the period, such as finance, committee with community informational forums, neighborhood walks through the Ryan campus and the annual town meeting reports. As we know, the Tewksbury Elementary School Building School Building Project was approved at town meeting on May 6, 2019. The building committee is now underway with the following tax, tasks. Execution of a project scope and budget agreement with the MSBA, contract negotiations with the OPM and designer, the selection of a construction manager, which is scheduled for completion on June 6, 2019. Resume building committee meetings on the first and third Thursdays evenings at 6 p.m. in town hall. Design coordination meetings <coughs> with the school department and town departments and agencies. And other miscellaneous tasks as well. The project is now entering the design development phase. During the design development phase, the project team works out detailed coordination issues while enhancing the project design and builds on the approved schematic design to reach a level of completeness that demonstrates the project can be built from all aspects of the design. The building committee, the OPM, designer, and soon to be construction manager will continue to provide updates and look ahead planning activities, deliverables, and milestone dates for the next several months as the <coughs> overall project design progresses. Cost estimates are performed and schedules are produced. I want to say the building committee continues to remain focused to its mission statement, which is to proactively work towards developing a solution that addresses the district's elementary school's needs that will be educationally appropriate and physically sound. Also, I send a letter on behalf of the building committee uh, and the school committee out to the papers. Hopefully it will be in their papers this week. And basically what it says to the residents of Tewksbury, Thank you for showing your support of the new elementary school with your votes at the ballot in April and at the town meeting last week. As we move ahead with this project, we are committed to paying close attention to the details discussed during all the forums. A team approach and collaboration have brought us this far, and we are confident that this process will lead us to a school complex that we all can be proud of. We are committed to working hard to be sure this project brings us brings our town a superior outcome. 
one that will bring Tewksbury forward in educating and developing community spirit with the young citizens of this great town. Thank you again for your support and confidence. And I would be remiss if I can't thank every, or anybody in this town who was at that town meeting and endured the three hours uh, of the uh, chatter up until the vote was there. It was tremendous to see so many people and so many young people there also who learned that this is really democracy in its, in its true form. And the other group that I, I, I say thank you all the time, but I can't thank them enough, is the Friends of the Tewksbury Elementary School Project. They've been working on getting that vote out, getting people to the town meeting and getting the word out of just how important this project, uh, led by Molly Ginsburg and her crew. Um, this town should be so much appreciated to all the work that they've done. Jamie, anything you like to add? Oh, that was pretty good, Dennis. Thank you. Thanks. Um, next up is the Tewksbury Education Foundation. Mr. Demos, anything? There's nothing to report at this time. And the Mr. Uh, Stedman, the Wellness Advisory Committee, anything at this time? Nothing as of yet. We're not going to have our uh, change of the guards until Next meeting Monday. is Monday, May, May 20th. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> You're welcome. For that update of the update. <laughs> and, uh, and knew that we've added to the committee reports, but we felt as a committee that's very important to have is we're going to have a monthly report from Mr. Sullivan on the Tewksbury Special Education Pack. Great. Um, the pack had a very nice meeting here at the end of last April. Um, there's a lot of exciting things going on in the CPAC and in the district. Um, one of the biggest things that's being worked on with the CPAC and our state delegation in the district is a CPAC day on the Hill. So there'll be some information to follow regarding that. Also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, their last business meeting for the year uh, takes place right here tomorrow night from 7 to 8. You're always welcome to come in early, 6.30, and meet uh, like-minded people. Um, they'll also be having the board elections for the 2019-2020 school year, as well as discussing upcoming initiatives. In addition, the CPAC would like to welcome all special education and 504 families uh, to the family engagement night at the Blue Wave Recreation Center on May 28th from 6 to 8. That's also being run in conjunction with the district. This will be a fun time for all CPAC parents and their children. There will be light refreshments and an opportunity for parents to socialize while the kids play in an inclusive environment. Um, one final, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank a couple people. Um, this year we piloted an integrated unified basketball program at the Wynn. Um, Rick Pelletier, special thanks to Rick Kamari, who's a fantastic special education teacher over there, and our best buddies director right here at the high school, Brian Airwood, who helped uh, pilot the basketball program for us. We had anywhere from, I don't know, 10 to 12, maybe 13 students um, from all uh, spectrums of uh, uh, education both kids receiving services and kids that didn't receive, uh, that aren't receiving special education services. And uh, it was fantastic for um, all the kids to get together and just roll the ball out and have some fun. So um, thank you to those people and that's all I have with regards to the CPAC update. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. You're welcome. I'm moving on to policy changes, proposals and adoption. Mrs. Demos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Looking at the policy changes, there will be no changes in recommendations at this time. Thank you, Mr. Demos. And moving on to old business. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. What you have in front of you is informational only, but it highlights our the last of our district-wide PD workshops, which was May 2nd. You can see that, again, the district was uh, knee-deep in learning how to develop curriculum maps for better understanding. This has been a long and arduous process, I would say, for our staff, but very rewarding. Um, part of the, um, well, big part of quality instruction obviously goes into the mapping and planning of what is going to, instruction is going to look like in the classroom. Um, many of our teachers will continue this work over the summer. I can say that there was quite a celebration when they finished on that half day <laughs> as they have been, um, they've learned quite a bit. This has been a very, very um, wonderful process, not only to struggle through, but to learn to collaborate better around difficult planning tasks like this. So we're really proud of our staff. 
um, for their efforts, and we will continue, obviously, with this district approach. It's, it's certainly curriculum mapping never goes away. We just get better at it, and we tweak it. And then if we look at, um, if you see right above that yellow, those yellow two lines, we shifted gears a little with our developmental <coughs> learning teachers and our related service staff and had them collaborate and plan for transitional services and processes for our students for next year. So they were very appreciative of that time together as well. Thank you, Mrs. Regan. Moving along we, to new business, we already did the student handbook, and now we can talk a little bit about the summer reading program. Let's, let's talk about summer reading. So um, what you have in front of you is the K through 12 summer reading packets for all of our schools. We're trying to get this out a bit earlier than you know, our June meeting because we want our library invested in having those books ready for students. Um, let me just go through a little bit, some of the highlights, I'm sure you've read this thoroughly. But uh, K through four, the focus is on the joy of reading and the, those first two quotes say it all. When students are motivated in reading, um, they're motivated to learn. Reading, as we know, is the foundation and uh, contributes to successful education and learning. Students can choose books that they enjoy. Parents can read to their children in K through four or any grade level for that matter. There's never anything wrong with that. So there's a suggested book list for all grade levels and then some organizers that begin that writing process and start to develop comprehension uh, strategies for students. If we look at the Ryan, we see that we um, suggest and nudge every student to read three books. We start to differentiate now between fiction and nonfiction. We ask students to keep track and now they start to fill in those story maps and really learn um, how to differentiate and, and separate out pieces of uh, what they've read. If we look at the win, we see a focus now more on real ELA standards, character analysis, the writing process, comprehending, taking actual quotes from the text, and um, this will serve as one of their first grades. The notes they take through the summer reading contribute to um, writing activities they're gonna do when they come back to school after discussing some of those topics. And then we finally have the high school summer reading. We've done several iterations of summer reading at the high school, most of which the most recent have been very successful, and we're going to uh, maintain what we tried last year, and this is that the student gets to tailor their own reading experience to something they enjoy. This reading uh, choice that the student makes does have some questions that um, have a percentage of how that assignment will contribute to their first writing assignment and it contributes to a graded assignment. Really what this is about too is one, keeping those students' brains alive, reading keeps them thinking and um, um, uh, engaged in the learning process. What we also want is to use that reading for enjoyment as that baseline writing to, in discussion at the, in every English language arts class for all grade levels, where students all have English language arts at the high school. So this is what that does, and it helps the English language arts teacher get a good gauge of students' you know, interest, comprehension, and ability to write from what they read. You can see that there are some um, instructions from the English teachers, because they really took this, this uh, program back. They would, they are, asking the students to not read books that will now be read throughout the school year as part of their curriculum. Any questions on the summer reading? Any questions from the committee? May I also um, tell the committee, and I should have said this, all of these summer reading programs are posted on our district website and again shared with the public library so that books can be available to students sooner than later. Thank you. I just have one comment, Mrs. Regan, especially for some of our new members, is the, the amount of uh, increase in readership especially at our higher grades over the last four or five years, has been, has been tremendous with the programs, especially here at the high school, from where this program was five, six years ago to where the program is yeah. today. Um, and I think that's a direct result of involvement by yourself and also by the staff here at all grade levels, but especially at the high school. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Moving along to the new curricular resources. Okay. Um, what you have is, again, informational only. Part of our uh, policy and procedure in um, implementing new curriculum resources is that the public or the community has access to looking at those resources before we purchase. So what you have is a memo, um, as I 
announced last meeting, Michelle Dick, our district math coach, is leading a pilot to update our math curriculum resources, in particularly grades six to eight and high school, the required courses, algebra one, algebra two, and geometry. Grade five is slightly involved in this pilot, and I'll tell you why. Um, Envision Mathematics is one of the piloted resources. It has a fifth grade component. We have not made that determination yet if Envision will be the purchase resource. If it is, we will consider also purchasing it for fifth grade so there's a cohesive fifth through eighth grade middle school math program. Um, we will look at all of PK through five next year in math if this fifth grade is not included. But you can see the titles that are being um, piloted are Envision Mathematics, Discovery Math Textbook, and Illustrative Math. Um, the, the pilot continues through the rest of May. What we have provided for you is an informational presentation, if you will, with linked um, websites that community members can go on to and see these texts um, in more detail or see the resources. What we're seeing is all of these resources are online. It's almost impossible for us now to go back to the approach we used to have and put them all out at the mm -hmm. curriculum office so people can come and thumb through them. These are all um, digital resources. So we're, we're um, doing our best to make sure everything's available to everybody because we can't give accounts to the whole public to see the whole uh, resource. But what's exciting about a digital resource is we typically do a six-year curriculum review for all content areas and for these resources. We usually then purchase a six-year subscription, sometimes five. What's nice with the digital resource is as it updates, and gets better throughout that entire subscription or contract, it's updated in re almost real time online, We're opposed to you know a, a hardcover textbook that we have to wait for the next six year implementation to have updated resources. So it's exciting and challenging all at the same time. Let me just tell you the going rate of um, a curriculum resource. I, I resist saying textbook because it's not really. It's a resource um, or digital textbook is about $15 a year per student. We're looking for this math implementation or uh, renewal of these resources in the range of $150,000 to $175,000 for those three middle school grades and the high school. It would obviously go up slightly. So that has not been negotiated yet, but the going rate, as I said, about $15 per student times six years times we're looking at about 1,500 to 1,750 students. Next in the new business, it, should I stop and take any questions on the math text or can I keep I'll going wait, with I'll social wait, no, studies? We'll take any okay, thank you. You'll see, um, in addition, we have an information only memo from Chris Gagnon. He's a grade eight social studies teacher at the Wynn. He's been leading the pilot on new um, curriculum digital resources for grades six, seven, and eight. We particularly chose grades six, seven, and eight because with the new curriculum frameworks for social studies and history, there's been substantial changes, especially to the um, curriculum mapping we've had prior in those grades. Uh, for social studies and history. So you can see that there's a team piloting Discovery Ed Techbook for social studies and history as well as the McGraw-Hill Connect um, digital resource. Again, I suspect um, we've seen some of these preliminary quotes because we <coughs> ask them to sharpen their pencil a little bit um, at about $15 a student per year times six years we're looking at about sixty to seventy thousand dollars for this new curriculum resource and um, both of them I should say include some PD for the teachers to implement the resource. Um, we have this money already planned. I think that's important for you to know in our budget. This is our new curriculum. We call it our textbook capital outlay uh, budget money that we have annually um, and we annually reserve $250,000 for this curriculum renewal um, process and we will spend the money on these two new um, resources through that money. Thank you. With your approval, of course, in June. <laughs> Any questions from the committee? Just a quick question. For my own information, what would a typical, <clears throat> the electronic copy versus a, a, a standard textbook over a six-year term, I mean, so just for... So you <coughs> would think that it would be significantly cheaper when they go digital or online, and it's not. In fact, we've seen, you know, the exact same cost for the print 
versus the online version. Um, and, you know, but we do get the benefit of those regular updates online. All resources would be online. What's really nice is when we, uh, when I ask you for your vote to purchase, whichever is the chosen resource, you'll see the rubric, you'll see all of the data that goes along with it. Um, that, what that means is we're not waiting for, you know, scads and scads of boxes to come in over the summer, which I know Ms. Demos has been part of unpacking and getting out to all the classrooms. That digital subscription will be available to our teachers immediately before they even leave school here on June 14th. So um, the cost is not different. As I said, we look at about 100, you could say 85 to a little over $100 per student for a six-year uh, subscription. Not each year, per year. I mean, per contract, six-year contract. And I don't think the industry is caught up to the need. I think it's predominantly still based on uh, hard copy textbook companies generating this that's supporting uh, California, <coughs> Texas, and Florida, where they're not getting as much high end of uh, integration of technology. I think once we see totally technology-based companies developing these materials, that's when we'll see the shift. I'm not so sure it will be a cost savings, but it will be a true integrated technology-based resource as opposed to a textbook that's online that gets regular updates, which is good. It's, a, it's an upgrade from what we're doing. But I think once we see companies really start to take off and start from a point of we're, we're starting this instruction technology based, not adapting it from a hard book. I, I think we'll see improvements on that. It's a new game. Illustrative math um, is an open um, ed resource, meaning it's free. That's a curriculum map, comes with PD. It still needs some resources to align to that map. It's a very uh, scripted, very successful program. As I said, it's being piloted because we know other districts are having success. So, you, so people will say, well, illustrative math, that's free but any resource that aligns to it will not be. Um, you know, if you look at a textbook for one course, for example, at a, at a college level, you're paying in the big range, hundreds of dollars. So for us to have a six-year contract at about $100 per student is really good. Mm -hmm. um, the only question I have, Mrs. Regan, is these, um, I still call them textbooks. Uh, it, we textbooks. do too, digital textbooks. Um, how old are the, are the current um, textbooks that we have in these areas right now? You know, I don't have that information in front of me right now, and I can certainly bring that back to you, but um, they are outdated. They're not aligned to our new standards. Some might say, well, math doesn't change, but it does. The practices and the way in which we do teach math, um, it's not a drill in, you know, kill anymore. It's certainly not, you must memorize this algorithm. It's around understanding why things work the way they do. So, so our textbooks now are outdated, even if only 10 years old, they're very outdated. And so um, these new texts that we're piloting are aligned to the National Common Core as well as particular alignments to Massachusetts which incorporates those Common Core standards. Because the reason why I bring it up is that in, and you, you've been around long enough, so in years past, we went sometimes 20 years, 25 years with the same textbooks. I will tell you some of our high school math textbooks are still in that range, and, and we are you know, in serious need of changing that. And the only other question I have is on the social studies uh, history, is I know there's soon the, M the MCAS is going to, yeah. will that align into that yes, program? Yes, and, and that's a big reason we decided, so we have a six-year cycle, and social studies history really wasn't right there. But because there is a civic project component that can work its way into an MCAS assessment, we're not sure what it's going to look like yet as far as an MCAS, but we do know there will be a mandatory civics component to the eighth grade, um, whether it be a project, whether it be an assessment, it's happening, it's gonna happen. So we needed resources that are gonna get our teachers to help our kids get there. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. No. Thank uh, you. Can I just ask yes. for clarification? I'm sorry, um, did you mention that the PD was also included in the math as well as the social <clears throat> I wasn't clear if it was just the social studies. It is. We will, and again, as I say, when we get those quotes, we ask them to sharpen their pencil, and that's the part we ask that all publishers put in. We need to know what it's going to be like to train. Now, some will vary how many mm -hmm. PD sessions, and we may have to purchase more, but that is taken into account when we um, examine the cost uh, comparison. And um, are these programs resources that are available to the teachers and the students? Um, similar to that when we did the Journeys pilot years ago, and we had 
the differentiation yes. right there at our fingertips for yes. the challenge and for the remediation right. yeah. at that right. level. Will and we have that opportunity with this as well? Yes, and um, so I've, I've also, we've had some wonderful meetings with our teachers who are doing the pilot. So there's, there's, there's pros and cons to that. One, I would say we always need differentiated approach for all of our, um, whatever the content area or the resources. On the other hand, I would say, if there are 17 interventions including in a, included right. in a resource, why? What's right. wrong with the core program that we need that many interventions? So they're balancing that. You need them, but if there's, if there's a lot of bells and whistles that seem like, geez, are they just adding a whole lot of glitter to this? You know, they're evaluating right. that too. Good, so they'll yes. mean that out. Yes. Excellent, thank you. That's well, all I have. Thank you, any other questions? Okay, moving on to the superintendent's contract. At this time, I would like to briefly talk about the contract agreement between Mr. Malone and the Tewksbury School Committee. The committee back in March thought it would be wise and prudent to come to agreement with Mr. Malone prior to the April election, as two of our members, Mrs. Palomino and Mrs. Bennett, served with him during his first three years and would no longer be on the committee come April. The committee came to a contractual agreement with Mr. Malone on March 26th in executive session, at which time the committee and Mr. Malone signed the contract. By statute, the contract to be formalized has to be voted on in a public session, which is what we'll be doing tonight. This vote has no bearing on the formal evaluation of Mr. Malone that will take place in June by this committee. The practice of the three committee members, which would be Mr. Cutlass, Mr. Sullivan, and myself, who have spent the time with Mr. Malone will make up the formal evaluation. However, our newest members, uh, Ms. Mrs. Demos and Mr. Statman, and our past members, Mrs. Palomino and Mrs. Bennett, will, is acceptable for, they, for them to weigh in as part of the evaluation. But again, the formal evaluation will be from the three committee members that served with Mr. Malone during the whole time. And basically, the way it'll work over the next few, over the next couple of weeks is those formal evaluations will come back to the chair and the chair at our, which is myself, at the, on, at the June meeting will do the formal evaluation at that time. But what I need tonight is a motion to accept the contract with Mr. Malone. I'd like to make a motion to enter into an agreement between the Tewksbury School Committee and Superintendent Christopher J. Malone. Second. Okay, I have a motion in a second on the floor to enter an agreement between the Tewksbury School Committee. Could I add one thing to that yes. motion for the duration to comprise, sorry, July 1, 2019 and expire on June 30th, 2022. Sorry, Mr. Chair. No problem, I was gonna say it anyway, okay. <laughs> so there's a motion and a second on the floor to have an agreement between the Tewksbury School Committee and Mr. Malone, the Superintendent of Schools, from, that begins on July 1st, 2019 and to expire on June 30th, 2022. I did a roll call vote on this. I'll start with Mrs. Demos. Aye. Mr. Cullis? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Mr. Stebbin? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Congratulations, Mr. Malone. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Okay, moving on to the school <coughs> committee uh, assignments file. Um, we will be voting on this tonight, but I'd like to make one uh, correction. I still think we can vote on this, but it was an omission on, on my part to add a new special education PAC uh, committee headed by Mr. Sullivan and Mrs. Demos. So I still think we could vote on this tonight and that would just be put into the final, um, final uh, copy. So if somebody can make a motion with that amendment to it. A motion to approve the Tewksbury School Committee 2019-2020 assignments. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion in, the, in a second on the floor to accept the Tewksbury School Committee assignments with the amendment adding the Tewksbury Special Education Pack with Keith Sullivan and Shannon Demos. I'll take this as a roll call vote also as well. Mrs. Demos? Aye. Mr. Cutlass? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Stadman? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Next up is the is the draft of the school the Tewksbury School Committee 2020 meeting schedule. Are there any questions on the schedule? <clears throat> Seeing none, do I have a motion to accept the 2020 school committee meeting schedule? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? 
I'll second. Second. Okay, I have a motion on the floor and second to accept the Tewksbury School Committee 2020 meeting schedule. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. Next up is the School Committee Matters of Interest. I'm going to start with Mr. Stadner. Uh, quick ones, let's see. Uh, the cleanup of Tewksbury. Um, just want to commend the, you know, a few dozen students that <coughs> did turn out. Uh, I was here with uh, you know, about a dozen students to clean up around uh, Tewksbury Memorial High School. Um, you know, they did a great job bagging up probably about a dozen uh, bags. Um, you know, I know that there was a, um, also pulled out of the, um, the uh, also pulled out a sink and some other crap out of the, uh, out of the, uh, what do you call the, uh, out of the woods. So it was a great job for the, uh, some of the students around here. Um, also tomorrow is the uh, student election. So I wish the sophomores, juniors, and seniors uh, best of luck during your speeches and commend you guys whether or not you do get a spot that you wanted. Um, I do commend you for stepping up and deciding to, uh, you know, put your name into the ring. And like I said, I wish you the best of luck tomorrow during your speeches. And, um, you know, over the next month, I know that there's a lot of activity for um, juniors and seniors. Um, and I, I know just to take a, you know, take a few seconds, you know, put your eye things down and your and your other devices down and just seriously take a take a minute and actually not in front of the screen but actually take a minute and actually absorb what you're doing because um, you're never going to get this time back um, but you know take in that moment and just absorb what you're actually doing and um, just enjoy yourselves and uh, enjoy the moment thank you thank you Mr. Solo Yes, and be safe, just to piggyback yeah. that. <laughs> you can never be safe enough. Um, in addition, I'd like to wish all of Tewksbury student athletes that are competing next Wednesday in Lawrence over at the uh, Special Olympics. Um, hopefully we'll get some good weather that day. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank the district for uh, a very special day on the Hill this year. This is the third year I went and it was really exciting um, to have our girls hockey team student athletes there. Uh, and we really got a nice, uh, a, a different perspective of the state house, uh, having those girls with us and their coaches as well. So uh, that was fantastic. Uh, I'm pretty sure the chair's going to hit on it, but obviously, um, you know, thank you to everyone that came out and continues to support our schools. We're overwhelmed, um, obviously, and we just want to reassure everyone that. Um, our work hasn't stopped. We're not satisfied that we're going to get a new school in 2022. Uh, we're still as committed today as we've ever been. Um, I know I can speak for the committee when I say that we are trying to advance achievement um, for all of our students in the district. That's going to continue to happen uh, right now, probably in some crappy buildings, but um, we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that all the resources that we need to dedicate to our students, we're doing that. And come 2022, obviously, it's going to be uh, a, a nice enhancement. But in the meantime, we're going to keep at it and do what we need to do to enhance achievement on the district. That's all I have tonight, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Cullis. I'll set, Mr. Chair. Thank this is Dima. Um, I would like to echo the, um, the words of my, my colleagues that I want to thank everyone out there that took the time out of their busy lives to come and attend the town meeting and support the vote for the new school. It's important. I was overwhelmed by the number of families and um, community members that we saw there that night, and it really speaks volumes to how important this is for the entire community and, you know, the students of Tewksbury. Um, I also attended the day on the Hill and was very impressed. It was a first time for me, so I didn't have anything to compare it to, but um, besides being left on my own at lunch by my <laughs> colleagues here. It was a great day. Um, the girls hockey league, um, hockey team and the coaches, that was a great experience. And I also want to just also congratulate the two student representatives yeah. that went um, to represent the government aspect of the day on the hill. Sydney Crowley and my daughter Emma Demos um, actually had a great opportunity as well to sit down and talk with the state reps, ask their questions. They had a few topics they were trying to lobby 
onto them. <laughs> um, I think it was just a great opportunity for those girls as well. Um, the art show that I attended over the weekend was quite impressive. One thing that really stuck out to me that I think was different, I have attended this for 10 years at least now, as long as my girls have been in the district, right? Um, I was very impressed with the fact that the art teacher's work was displayed this year. Yes. It shows the talent of the teachers that are sitting in front of these students daily, um, and they should be proud of that. It was impressive to me to see, and I, I think that they should be acknowledged for that as well. Um, and finally, I just want to say that I did attend Peter Pan last night as well. <laughs> I got um, front row seating. It was nice to sort of come home for the day. I felt as though I was back with some family. The amount of staff and students that were there just gave me chills. The students, I had to remind myself that they're eight, nine, ten years old, and they're up on that stage commanding. It, it was just an amazing night for me. Um, and I want to just say kudos to everyone that was involved at the Trahan School that really it was you wouldn't believe they were third and fourth graders up there on the stage. And I can't wait to see when they get up to the <laughs> high school what kind of drama shows we're going to be looking forward to. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Demos. Well, some of the things that I was going to say have been said be by my other committee members, but I'm going to say it anyway. But one of the things that really stands out, I mean, we've, we've talked about Peter Pan. We've talked about the concert and the art show. Um, also last week, last Saturday night, was Mary Poppins at the Ryan School, which also was the night of the first, uh, of the next round of the Bruins, uh, of the Bruins uh, run to the cup. But the thing it goes to show you, every one of those instances, the auditoriums were packed. Mm -hmm. Even at the high school for the art show, it was packed. And I know a lot of times we talk about athletics uh, in, in this town, but it also goes to show you the, uh, how, how much the parents are into the arts and into the education part. Um, as well, so it was. It was um, like I said, Peter Pan last night. You stop. You have to sit there and stop to think that these kids are only eight and nine years old. And even last week, uh, for Mary Poppins, was was the same thing. And uh, one other thing on the day on the hill, I have to give a special thanks to uh, uh, Dave Robinson for putting that uh, together for the hockey team. And one thing I'll say, I've, this is my third time doing a celebration at the high school. Once was the, high, the boys hockey team, the football team, and this was the most well thought of put together day that they've had um, with our legislatures and also uh, the legislatures from Methuen also in terms of uh, going into the uh, Senate chambers, sitting in the chairs, going into the house and having the speaker speak to the kids. The whole day was just, was just uh, um, well done. Um, and as um, Mr. Sullivan mentioned, that Special Olympics will be at Lawrence. Uh, the opening ceremony is at 9 a.m. and that'll be Wednesday. And hopefully for once, we'll have good weather. It seems like they haven't had good weather for anything lately. Um, another reminder is the Memorial Day parade is coming up. Uh, Memorial Day the fi at, on 527, there'll be a ceremony at the cemetery at 12 o'clock honoring all our veterans. And at 1 o'clock, the parade will, will start up. So it's, there's a lot going on. And one other thing, one last other thing on the day on the Hill, um, there's a couple, there's three or four different programs that I know the Massachusetts Association of School Committees is working on, and that's a special education circuit breaker to try to get full funding uh, to get mitigation reimbursement to the districts where there's charter schools, and also to increase Chapter 78 and to redo the entire foundation budget. So those are three things that um, I know the Massachusetts Associated School Committee is doing with, and I know we talked to our legislators while we were there that day, and I know that they're trying to work on that uh, as well. And I've said it in my earlier statement, I can't thank the town of Tewksbury enough for coming out to support the schools with over, over nine, almost 900 people there that sat there for over three and a half hours, and especially with some of the young kiddos that stayed there as well. So a special thanks goes out to everybody who supported uh, the project. And as Mr. Sullivan said, this ain't the end, it's just the beginning, and uh, we'll move forward with that. That being said, <clears throat> any future agenda items? Okay, seeing none, uh, we have a workshop next Wednesday night uh, from 6 to 8 with Dorothy Presser, who's our representative from the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. And our next scheduled school committee meeting is June 12th, and the one after that is July 24th.
So if there's nothing else, I will take a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you and good night.